Let's see how the sausage is made, shall we? It's tricks of the trade talk time. I always allow 30 seconds of game footage to be played so people don't immediately click off the video, think I'm not covering the game at all and I'm just talking about the TV show. But that's not the case, as we all know. However, I've now got a timer for this episode, with a countdown timer, of course, to show me how much time I've got to show the game for before I can get into the crux of it. Is it time yet? Now? Oh, there we go. Normally, when I talk about a show, I usually say the show was when I'm talking about the Spectrum version of that show. But with Countdown, I can say that Countdown is, because Countdown is still going, with nearly 7,500 episodes in the bank. Making its debut as the very first programme shown on Channel 4 when it launched in 1982, Countdown is one of the longest-running television shows in the world. Much like the previously covered It's a Knockout and The Magic Roundabout, Countdown actually has its roots in French television. It was based on the show De Chiffre de Lettres, which in English, of course, means numbers and letters. And that is also still running and it has been since 1965. That means Countdown is barely a daddy's money shot compared with its French granddad counterpart. The show's format is this. It's a tea time, 30 minute daily broadcast game show for smart asses and of course bored pensioners. One of the two contestants picks from two stacks of vowels and consonants nine times until this random jumble of letters are placed upon the wall and then they are each given 30 seconds to reassemble those letters into the longest word that they can. As long as they don't use names, proper nouns, hyphenated words and American spellings, they're as golden as gilded golden grahams. This repeats several times over the course of the episode, punctuated by maths rounds with a similar choose-your-fate selection format, lame attempts of humour by the main presenter that is usually greeted by, you know, a low but polite audience chuckle. And then there is the uber-smart workings out by the brainy beauties Susie Dent, Carol Vorderman and latterly Rachel Riley. I reckon a certain viewer of this video just swooned at the mention of that name like he's a blushing courtesan in a Jane Austen novel or something. Hello, Andre Russell. Check out his channel. Scores are awarded to the person who got the longest word or the closest to that number with the loser getting out. There still might but often not, a chance for a late high score in the climactic countdown conundrum round with a pre-selected nine letter combination flashing up with the quickest person buzzing in with their answer. And unfortunately that usually is the person who has dominated the entire show further burying the poor normal brain sap next to him. Just turn around and call him a nerd. What a bastard. On to the game of the computer variety, and well, 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 if it isn't Maxon Software. Maxon Software, we meet again. However, this will be for the last time, as we've covered the Blockbusters games, Treasure Hunt, Bullseye very recently, and yes, I have done a video on EastEnders, a contender for the worst video game on the ZX Spectrum, and that along with this game, is their entire catalogue of games. They never did anything non-TV related. What a legacy! Released in 1985 for all the major UK formats of the time, that being the Spectrum, the Commodore 64, the Amstrad and the BBC Micro, Countdown is an accurate, if visually unimpressive, representation of the original. Don't go expecting the handsome visage of Richard Whiteley rendered in monochrome or any clunky pixelated portrait of Britain's favourite MILF, Carol Vorderman. No, you don't even get a representation of the famous clock, which doesn't seem overly difficult to replicate on a 48k. Countdown by Maxon is no nonsense. Grandad will not be getting engorged by a digital Vordum ass snaking around on his 48k, have no fear. 
It's a black screen. It's letters, it's squares, and it's numbers, and it's a timer bar, and that is all it is. It looks like a Maxon game basic. Does it need more? No, it doesn't. But let's hope there are no corners cut elsewhere. Ah, well, we will get back to that, I guess. Countdown is a two-player game. Though I did find out you can play at one player by leaving the player two name blank. Something I didn't actually realise while recording the footage. At least it says so according to the manual. After that, it's uh, pretty much run in the same manner as the show itself, with each player taking it in turns to select the number of vowels and consonants in each anagram round for three turns, before the numbers round rocks up to make life miserable like a creepy uncle at a Christmas bash with his flies undone. That's usually me. A knowledge of old school spectrum formulas is essential during the numbers round as the asterisk key is your multiplication button. Something that I did not know uh, now, but I did know when I was 10, uh, when I was pretending to my mum that this thing was genuinely for schoolwork, um, but long since consigned that knowledge to the useless information memory bin at the back of my skull. A pen and pad are handy here as soon as the timer ends, you see. The numbers disappear, leaving you floundering. If you take too long, the computer will indignantly huff and about turn to your opponent for their answer instead, which is fair enough, cheaty pants. This bit is definitely finicky, but really, I'm not sure what else Maxon could have done, barring maybe an on-screen calculator key set up which might have been a bit more user-friendly, but that's not what Maxon is all about, really. For some reason, in the show, they called the computer that randomly selected a number Cecil to give it a sort of hyper-advanced howl-like kudos. All it does is display random numbers. Oh, the early 80s. You're so quaint. Back to the anagram round again, and I had better mention the game's rather piffilingly small dictionary. It will be a feature that those who played the Scrabble game included with a 48k six-pack will only be too aware of. Countdown just doesn't know that many words, and when it's not sure it will ask the hitherto unmentioned but bloody majestic sounding guardian of the dictionary if the word is valid. This implies that to play Countdown you need three people. Two to play the game itself and one to sit there as bored as a slug on a ceramic plate idly looking up swear words in the Collins Dictionary until called upon. After all this is done we get the conundrum round and the tallies are made and it boots right back to the title screen and its BP half assed rendition of the signature music. All ready for you to have another go if you so please. Oh, and there's no skill level option should you have found the first playthrough either too taxing or not taxing enough. It is a very Ron Seal does what it says on the tin game, for better or for worse. It is moderately fun, but it is also very flawed. There were just two reviews this time, once again showing wild swings in opinion as was the fashion of the time. Crash said that they get very little entertainment from it, and even if you're a fan of the TV series, they doubted it would appeal very much to you. A lowly 33% from them. Your Sinclair gave credit to Maxon for not glamming it up, which is an interesting take. They said it had produced not just a good replica, but a good computer game. They then bestowed a golden garland of 8 out of 10 upon its scalp which is a little bit lofty for my tastes. So having now covered all of Maxon's library, how do I rate them in order? The best one is probably Treasure Hunt, then the Blockbusters game, then Countdown, then Bullseye, and finally that pus-filled tumour on Ian Bill's bulbous ass. an arse not as nice as Rachel Riley's, I'm sure Zombie Bob would agree. So come back around this time next year, probably, to see how these Maxon games fit into 
a complete list of every Spectrum game based on a TV show ever made, which I'm planning to do after I've finished this series, which I still think is going to take about a year. Because, really, unlike this, that is a countdown you won't want to miss. Like, subscribe, and then the K thanks and the bye.